Well, good morning, Jane. Good evening, Lisa. How are you? I'm oh, you're... good. Well, apart from a poorly back, you've been oh. very, very suffering in silence. It's brutal. It's brutal. But oh, yeah. I've got my heating pad. <laughs> I'm ancient now. <laughs> you've got a TENS machine on it. Are you going to be going like that? <laughs> oh. oh, my. Okay, do you have those, do you have those stores, um, gosh, what, the Sharper Image? or Hammaker Schlemmer over in the UK? No, doesn't they're, ring any bells at all. Okay, so they're really cool stores that have like really fun, unusual gadgets. So they'll have things like, you know, like coffee maker, coffee makers and like regular stuff, but they'll also have like really fun, like a special like putting green if you like golf or, but they have massage chairs. Oh, I could go for, they. I think they've closed most of the stores here, even pre-pandemic. Right. But oh my gosh, I would go into those stores sometimes. Just you know, pop it out. And they're really, really good gift stores, especially for people on your list that are a little hard to shop for. Like my dad is always hard to shop for. If you have those people, yeah. you know, they're just hard to shop for. It was always just kind of fun. Um, but oh, the massage chairs. So that's that's another thing on our list when I finally make it over. We'll do yeah. the bookshops in Seattle. Exactly. And then we'll go into that gift shop. Oh. And actually there's, I guess, cars now make massage, massage chairs. So there are cars that you can buy. I don't think that'd be so good if I'm oh, driving. I don't know if that's wise. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe just for the passengers. Maybe it's just for the passengers. Yeah. I saw somewhere where it's like, cause I know that there's chairs that have like, you know, the heated chairs and the cooling chairs, which I think is. Oh yes. Uh, the heated ones are lovely. Yes. I need that, those over here, I tell you. Well, we were in Hawaii a few years ago and we rented a car and didn't rent a particular car, but got a car that actually had the cooling seats. And I have to say, mm. like, the feeling a little burst of like air conditioning coming <laughs> through the seat. Like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> we having to have toilet stops. <laughs> have we gone off on a tangent? I do uh, need that bell. <laughs> tangent. <gasps> oh, we should get that bell. We'll definitely get the bell. We, need to have a, we could I'll brand it. it Foodies oh. Tangent Bell. Now, do we want the bell that you just like hit on the top or do we want like the bell that you like ring? It doesn't matter. I feel that we should have one that you press a button and it shouts tangent <laughs> to bring you back on to. I love that. It's just, you know. Should we patent it before somebody else steals our ideas? I think so. Anyway. I think I'll tell one. you what we're going to do this week. I think we should. Let's like, yeah, let's move past the backs and massages. Should we just crack on with the video? I think, should we crack on with the video and surprise people? Well, you should tell, have a little intro because this was your chat. So, yeah, this is, this is, oh, 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 this is quite a pucker chat because, um, I, I don't know, for those who know me and that I run Myrtle's Kitchen, um, I've had some professional photography done a couple of times, of, of not of me, of my products. And uh, Photopia, the company that we're going to be talking to in the video, they took the, photogra the photographs of, of all my products. So that's how I met them. They're just the most lovely, what well, you'll see in the video, they're, they're lovely, humble, kind-hearted, super people. And um, Becca, who I'm talking to, is, <laughs> she's so nervous, bless her. <laughs> she really doesn't want to be there initially. You can see that she's completely out of her comfort zone being in front of the camera. But, you know, it, it, it improves. <laughs> and Simon refused to come behind, from behind the camera and he filmed it. And they've edited it for us as well. So it's... Um, it's probably one of our better efforts. I will just quickly apologize though, because there were two cameras set up and I got mixed up as to which one I was looking at. So the whole way through the video, I'm doing this, thinking I'm looking at the camera. <laughs> so I look like I've got sort of like a wall eye. I'm sort of like away with a fairy <laughs> over there somewhere. So I, when it finally came through, I, I really messed that one up. But uh, yeah, it's really informative. Lovely, lovely people. Um, they've got some fantastic clients over here. They do. A, they're so busy. If you can get in with a photo shoot with them, you're doing well. So 
uh, without much ado, sorry, I've talked a lot. Have you got any questions, Lisa? <laughs> I'm just excited to watch because I've seen your videos, I've seen your photos, and they're yeah. absolutely gorge. They're gorgeous, yeah. gorgeous, gorgeous. So yeah, I'm lovely. excited yeah. to, to get a so peek please. inside. Yeah. The, the well, there's dynamic. some tips in here as well for how to how to set shadows and things like that. So um, I love that. without much ado, should we have a look at it? Absolutely. Let's watch the episode. Let's over to Photopia. Good morning and welcome to Sunny Herefordshire. And it's a beautiful morning, and this is probably the most professional video <laughs> in our collection of videos because I am at Photopia and they are doing all the hard work for me and I'm feeling a bit of a fraud, quite frankly. But without any further ado, let me introduce you to my new best friend, Becca <laughs> from Photopia. I'm going to ask Becca to introduce herself in a minute because she can sum up what she does much better than I can but then I'll go on and tell you how I came across Photopia, which is quite exciting for me anyway. Hopefully it will be for you. Meet Becca. And I would love you to, yeah, Becca hates being this side of the camera. I should say that straight away. Not, not a fan. She's used to having the camera in her hands. So be, be kind. Okay, right. Tell us about Photopia, where it started. Well, Actually, Photopia started when I was at university studying photography. Wow. So I kind of like came up with the name as part of our business um, module in university. Um, so I was Photopia and Simon was called Go Wild. <laughs> Simon's behind the camera. <laughs> so we worked up in Yorkshire um, for a few years. Then we went off travelling and then we came to Herefordshire. How did you and stumble across Herefordshire? Because it's not a natural place to fall upon. No, it's a little bit of a sad story. My mum um, moved um, oh. out here. Um, and then so mum sadly passed away in 2010. Yeah. Um, and we were kind of here in Herefordshire, not really knowing what to do. Um, and actually Herefordshire gave us a great big cuddle. And like met people like the amazing Claire Tromper yeah. and Joe Hilditch, and, and we went, yeah. hang on a minute, this is a really lovely, lovely place to live. Shall we give it a go for a year? <laughs> that was 2010. Yeah, we'll never look back. When you first started Photopia, even even all those years ago in uni, was food go always going to be the passion? Was that always your path, or have you discovered that along the way? Yeah, we have done other things throughout the, the time but food's always been that sort of underlying constant um, so even as assistants um, we were photographing with photographers that did things for a lot of the big supermarkets okay. up there um, and Betty's Tea Room <laughs> in now uh, Yorkshire and those shoots. The world what renowned Betty's Tea Room. And the amazing Betty's Tea Room and just those shoots were the ones that really went yeah this is what I want to be doing. I've worked with Photopia. That's my 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 common ground. And your passion for food really comes across. Oh, especially when we're making popcorn, by the way. And I need to get that recipe down off you because I've been making popcorn completely incorrectly for years. But it it really does. And as a food producer myself, you need that. Yeah. You need that from a photographer. It's no good going into a studio and sort of like, right, us telling you. I need you to tell me. And you do that. And you do it brilliantly. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's, it's my pleasure, Mutual Appreciation <laughs> Society. But you do. And I joined at the beginning of COVID uh, something called the Brand Polish Society with a wonderful lady over in America called Hilary, Hilary Hartling. And that's how I met Lisa. And... Um, yeah, she, it was all about the branding, but it was her, it was that group of women that gave me the confidence to take that step to get professional photography done. And I couldn't believe my luck that I got you on my doorstep, quite frankly. And that's why I was so nervous the first time, the first shoot we did with the preserves, because I'd never done anything like that before. A bit like you today, behind the camera. I'd never done anything like that. I didn't know what to do, how to do it. And you really nursed me through it. And and it I would recommend to anybody with a small food business to do that, to take that leap of faith. It just takes you to the next level and sets you above the other people. And like it just makes people 
even if it's just magazines or yeah where you want to get your um products into they go oh oh this is good like it yeah. just kind of gives you that extra little edge doesn't it it does and actually it's uh, I don't know quite how to put this into words but you, you, yes, I have confidence in my product. Obviously, I have confidence. But it gives you that added confidence that you can send it out there. And, and you know, I, I've had images in BBC Good Food magazine, things like that. But, yes, you're confident to actually send that file off and you think, oh, I've got good photography. <laughs> you know, and it, it, is a, it is a game changer. Do you prefer photographing a product or do you prefer... A plate full of food or both I think that's what I like about food photography and mm. photography in general is no two days are the same yeah so we might be sort of photographing a bottle and getting all the lighting right one day and then like having fun throwing popcorn in yeah. the air and the yeah. next day and, and that's what I really love about food photography is the, the variety and like you, and don't... you have got a real variety because we're, we're very blessed we've got loads loads and loads of amazing food producers in Herefordshire so there was something in the universe that brought you to Herefordshire <laughs> yeah. wasn't there because you've got such a selection of great food producers just on your doorstep absolutely it's just like abundant sort of yeah like amazing and then a lot of small businesses yes like say a farm who's branched out into making something else yeah. like themselves and diversifying to... and there's quite a lot of that going on at the moment yeah so. and just sort of getting that out into the world and it's lovely watching those businesses just grow and flourish like yeah. now I am obsessed with cookery books I have thousands of cookery books I put my hands up I love them if I go to bed at night it's a cookery book I turn to and I, it's my passion and I have this book <laughs> go on show and us you didn't know it was us. I didn't know it was there <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm, I could hyperventilate in a minute people <laughs> but this because Becca said we could Lisa if you're listening which you will be I know you will be we could do a couple of recipes out of this, but this is made in Herefordshire and it's all... Go on, you talk us through it because you know it better than me. So this is eight years ago now um, we created this book. So we were still fairly new to the area. We were just saying, this is the most amazing variety of people um, in Herefordshire. It would be really nice to get them all together um, and try and do like a cookery book that just ce celebrates Herefordshire. Yeah. So... That is our next mission, Lisa, a cookbook. You've heard it here first. I'm just, I'm just amazed and so impressed by that because this would be my dream to create something like that. Oh, it was so much fun to create as well. I'm like tasting all the recipes. And, uh... <laughs> Did you taste all of the recipes in here? Every all of single them. recipe, yeah. Well, either myself or Simon. Yeah, every and you... single one was photographed, just real, not... We'd never ever play with the food. It's always the real food, just lit and photographed nicely. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. I'm so impressed. I wasn't running then, otherwise I'd have been in this book. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what we're saying. Herefordshire's changed so much yeah. in the eight years since it's... Yeah, there are, and there's lots of people moved to Herefordshire, like yourselves, really, that yeah. have started businesses. And that, new businesses. Yeah, and, yeah, like little cottage industries that... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they all knew how hard work it would be. <laughs> I could have tipped them off if they'd asked me. <laughs> but it's so much fun as well. It's hard work it and it's like, you wouldn't want it any other way. Right? And, and I think this is coming out in these videos, actually. You make such good friends within the industry because you, you do work long hours and you're, at, you're working weekends, you're working during the week to go to that market at the weekend, that those stall holders become your friends. Yeah. So as I was flicking through here, I saw lots of people that I know very well, like Sue Gilmore with her chocolates and Raisha there with her Indian kitchen. Yeah. And, you know, they're all really good, solid friends Amazing of mine. Amazing people, yeah. <laughs> Amazing people, really grounded and just, just a joy to know, actually. Yeah. And just kind of... 
doing their thing and like putting it out into the world and just sharing what their passion is with yeah. everybody else. Yeah. yeah, so, oh, well done to you. And I know you've done one for Shropshire as well. Yeah, I don't know. Shropshire one. We kind of uh, toyed with the idea of doing other counties, but we thought, keep it local. <laughs> yeah, that would be tough. So, I, I, sorry, I'm changing subject now. I might come back to the book because I am slightly obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a big thing, a, a thing for me, actually, it happened in, during COVID when we were in lockdown. Because, of course, usually I'm working on Saturdays at farmers markets or at food festivals. And suddenly I had weekends. It was quite a luxury. It was odd, but it was a luxury. And I discovered Saturday television. But it was interesting because on, on Matt Tebbett's programme, which is on BBC, um, he encourages people to retry the recipes that they've done. I might be cheap tr- telling you stuff you already know here. but And then he puts a big, like a montage on the board with his long stick and he points out. And the quality of the photography of these people that have recooked the, or created these recipes at home is amazing. And I think, why can't I create that for Instagram? <laughs> Whenever I do it, I've got a shadow across there, of, uh, you know, and it just never works out. I haven't got much natural light in my home kitchen. So I would love you to share some ideas because people love putting on Instagram what or Facebook. Other social media platforms do exist. <laughs> Lots of people love posting their meals. Mm -hmm. So, and there's some pretty dodgy pictures going out there. So can you give us some red hot tips on how to, how to take a photograph of, of a meal or a product? And, and then we'll, we'll, we'll send it off to Matt Tebbett on BBC. (laughs) And we yeah. might get a ta- we might be invited into their kitchen on a Saturday morning to taste the food. I think your key there was um, that you don't have lots of natural light in your kitchen. Okay. So you're going to have to find somewhere with some nice natural light. So I've got to move. <laughs> well, it can be north light. It doesn't have to. I'm not saying okay. like south facing full sun it can be a little north light window. Okay. Um, and like natural light is the best so if you've got all your overhead lights on you're going to be getting some like what we call cross shadows you know where the shadows kind of cross um, okay so i get the photo the camera shadow oh, half the right. time well, it's so me you've got, <laughs> so you've got a light behind you then i've got I, i've tried everything i've got lights overhead i've got lights that go round the kitchen at the bottoms so. of the units the first thing you and want then, to do is turn all of those off. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> There's me. I've even had the cooker hood light on. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just sort of like, does that work? So no. natural light okay. is the very, very best light. Norse light is of natural light is very okay. good. So have a look at your compass on your phone and see if you've got a window that's maybe a north light. OK. Um, oh, I wouldn't have even thought of doing that, so that's a good tip. So, yeah, so you want natural light. You kind of only really want one light source on your food. Um, and we've got a nice little trick if you want to have a look at it to like, mm. so that we can, yeah. you can, you'll be able to visually see what. Yeah, anything that will help me, I'm up for it. Excellent. I'm already moving home. <laughs> so let's get the tricks in there as well. So there's a really nice little um, trick that we can do. Um, so you can get a surface that you can like move around. Um, and I'm just going to use one of your products, but this could be for anything, say you were photographing a plate of food or anything. Okay. I'm just going to put a few little bits on the set just so you can see what the light's doing. Um, obviously, I wouldn't okay. normally walk around the place with oranges and on, I, on the And blocking lights as well, which isn't yeah, helpful, is but it? But no, that's the thing, and that's the beauty of it. So once you're on, you can see how much... So if you say... So in strong light. Oh wow! So you're so going to you have can, a. So you can see a big shadows because actually you you look at the shadow before you and don't so look this at the is product. In, so this is in shadow as well. People like to see okay. one light because you're used to I'm seeing. I'm learning a lot. In the natural light, you're used to seeing one light source, which is the sun. So actually, okay. what you don't want to do is suddenly get a torch there and try and like fill in the shadows. So meet Phil, <laughs> and all you do with Phil, if you see. 
Do you see how he's bouncing that light back in? Can so you... if I take spill away. If you're just wanting something kind of a little bit more soft, okay, you can take your product and go, do you see now you've not got any shadow, hardly any okay. shadow. You've just got a nice little one coming out here, but he's really soft, he's nice and diffused. Yeah, barely see that. Yeah, and so again, that's gonna be a lot nicer for your product. Um, you've not got sort of strong highlights and shadows to have to deal with. Um, and nothing to distract the eye. So once you've got your light all set and everything, then you can kind of like sort out all your styling and everything way before you've even cooked any of the food or anything. Um, you sort out what you're going to put in with it. Are you going to have like a napkin or put your food on the board? And you get all that in your kind of okay. situation ready. And then okay. it's only at the very last minute that the food comes onto the set. So then it's fresh. So you're not playing with it. So you're not doing all this walking around. So we always say like, Actually, the very last shot is almost a sort of anticlimax. Yeah. Because yeah. you've done all your prep. It may have taken half an hour, an oh, hour. Yeah. Doing all your prep and everything. And then once your food is actually in the okay. food, your last, it, that's and your it's last, gone. yeah, that's your last little bit of the puzzle. But that's what's so nice about it. And mm. because we only ever like photograph like real foods and everything, we don't play with it too much, then you can eat it. <laughs> Make sure you got the photo first. <laughs> but that's what I said, like the it's the that's the last little elements. Once you've kind of thought about the lighting, once you thought about all okay. the styling and everything, and then your food is like boom in. And click. with the styling, one thing I notice about your your photographs and looking on your website, and we'll put all the details, the links below for you to have a look at. Um they're all they all have their own identity, and yet when you look at, at certain photographers, there's there's an Instagram page for food photography alone, and you can generally tell which photographer has taken which photo because they have a style. Yeah. Whereas you seem to bend towards the the company that you're creating the photography for. Absolutely, we think that's so important to get every element that we can of that business's personality through in the pictures okay. and it's actually something we've been criticized for I said hang on a minute we can't really see a kind of consistent style through these photography but actually that's one thing we think is a really good selling point for us well I, we I think it's a really good selling point for the producer yeah we make sure that we get their style through in our photo yeah so there's certain things that we always do like light it nicely we're always trying to emulate natural light because although we don't use natural light we're always thinking, hmm, if it was summer, the sun would be nice and high. Yeah, and yeah. If it was winter, maybe we bring our light down a bit lower and stuff. Okay. Um, so, but we always try and think, is that person fun and fruity and vibrant? Or is that person kind of sexy and demure? Oh, and... That's, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and we try... <laughs> Not. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> We always try and get that through in the, the, the personality, personality of the business or the producer or their product. I think that's great because um, we'll go on to talk just quickly about photography versus video in a minute. But when we were shooting the video for the, the last shot that we did together, <laughs> which was for my seasonings range. And I mean, that was just like uh, the cheer that went up. <laughs> when, uh, we'll put the video in uh, because there's a tin of a seasoning that explodes. Yeah. <laughs> but the cheers that went, perhaps we should put some of the failures in <laughs> because it's just a joyful thing. And it's that is, I think that is my personality. Yeah. We'll try and learn as much as we can about business before we do a shoot and we'll say, what what is the essence of okay. this business? like? And do you get drawn in? Do you get tempted in by the stars? It's, it's for instance, we were talking about the BBC programme that he takes the mick out of the the crinkly, unpressed uh, tablecloths on the <laughs> oh, table, love, which is a bit of a fashion. Yeah. <laughs> and do you get drawn in? Do you look at photographs? Are you, are you going through magazines that we can thinking, oh, that's quite nice? Oh, yeah. You constantly got to look at all kind of what's nice at the moment and stuff and just kind of keep your finger on the pulse. Um, and yeah. So if you're so, a food blogger or a foodie photographer in you, it, as a hobby, I'm mm. not talking um, professionally, it's all in the prep, it's which is a bit like being a cook. Yeah. It's all in the prep. Absolutely. You prep everything beforehand. 
And often you'll find, say, with food bloggers and things, you'll they'll have their favourite window <laughs> and you'll be able to see that they're lighting. So maybe 10 o'clock on their favourite window is yeah. their best light. Okay. And so they'll kind of tie in with that. So they'll maybe do their recipes and things. Oh, that's to, so interesting. To be finished at that time. Yeah. They, they know in their head my favourite window, mm. whatever time. And they'll go, that's my lovely light. Okay, so um, in the land of TikTok and Reels, yeah. Instagram Reels are the thing. <laughs> are, you, are you going over to the dark side? Are you going over and doing more video work? Or are you still hanging onto your camera and doing stills? It's something that's been asked a lot and it's something that's increasing and increasing. And yeah, we do. And it's a natural thing to be able mm. to to mix photography and video and to be able to do both. I can almost hear Simon's excitement behind the camera. <laughs> and I'm not even looking at him. But you yeah, do Simon work all the technical so stuff. well together. I mean, you don't, do you fall out ever? We bicker, don't we? <laughs> I've not seen <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> it doesn't come across. You seem yeah. to work seamlessly together. Yeah, and you almost that's... have that connection where you know what the other one's thinking. Absolutely. And we both kind of bring different things to the table, which is really nice. So Simon's very technical with his lighting, um, but I'll be more about the styling and stuff. And together, okay. that's just like the perfect combination and stuff. And it's really nice being able to like shoot with him. And <laughs> doesn't Aww. happen so much now. We've got You've heard that before, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, we were struggling beforehand to think about what we were going to cook after this, Lisa and I. Um, to, but we've got our answer now. Yeah, I'm not going nice to cook favorite. everything out of here. <laughs> pick your favourites. Some nice Herefordshire recipes. Do you want to pick two favourites for us, or? Oh, I don't know. Um... Put that to that. <laughs> Perhaps we should uh, pick a page number or something like that. And should, just should go, should random. Go, uh, random. <laughs> Okay. Oh, how about um, Tyrrell's? <laughs> Tyrrell's. Actually, Tyrrell's. that would be perfect because I think, isn't Tyrrell's owned by an American company now? Is it? Cool. I, have, I might have that wrong. <laughs> yeah. I will double check that. I have contacts within Tyrrell's. We Chris. should explain. Yeah, Tyrrell's, Tyrrell's is a crisp company. Tyrrell's crisp. And um, in the book, we did a recipe where you actually crush the crisps and make the coating for a fish finger using the Tyrrell's crisps. It's wow. such a nice recipe. And, it and was actually... Presumably, it's just their ordinary crisps. It not All of them are extraordinary, but they're not flavoured. No. I think we've used the lightly salted, and we have actually done it with the salt and vinegar ones, Ooh, which is a bit interesting. Now you're well. talking. I think it's just the lightly salted in the book. But, I mean, if you if you want something, like, a bit spicy on your fish You finger, could, because really I think they could. do a cider vinegar one. Yeah, yeah. As a cider vinegar one definitely works really nicely. But, yeah, I think I think it's just the plain in the book. Can I yeah, lightly up? salted in the book. We'll put the images on, but that that's... <laughs> For anybody that's got the book, it's page 63. So go on, tell us about, about tell us how about you the, created the that recipe then. Finger. So um, some people in the book came to us and said, yeah, we've got a recipe and we want to do this. And other people say, yeah, we've got a product. Can we put a, can we put a recipe in? So we kind of like researched this and it came about from, um, I think you can crush up other things like cereals um, and things. Cor Kellogg's Corn Flakes yeah. is a popular one, and isn't it? And it was like, oh, well, that would work with crisps and like these guys wanted to be in, in the book and everything and so we just kind of like married that all together and everything and we loved the recipe so much it was actually one of the first videos we did because we do little videos with um our yeah. son called chef dylan <laughs> chef dylan oh my god this will be your new guilty pleasure <laughs> chef dylan because he's got his own youtube channel the one with the dog biscuits is my personal <laughs> favorite i have to say but you have to, we'll put the link in for that as well, because it, you have to check that out. <laughs> oh, off the scale cute. <laughs> so he's been doing these since he was four, he's now eight. He? Yeah, we kind of slowed down with them a bit, because obviously like with school and homework and everything. But so like we do little recipes and this was one of the very earliest ones. So when he was four, um, we did this little recipe and the video actually like won an award and then we went off to the food film festival in new york <laughs> in new york yeah it won an award here um called the pink lady we came third um wow 
oh. in the Pink Lady Food Film Award. And then that was when they picked us up. Um, and did you take Dylan? We didn't. <laughs> I knew that was going to get... Poor Dylan. He'll get to the age of 18 and he will really hate you for that. He'll be like, why didn't you take me to New York? It was right in the middle of school. It was only a quick trip and everything. Yeah, and yeah. with the time difference and everything. So we were like, none and granddad got to come in there. <laughs> be with Dylan. He, yeah, he you will have before. to take Dylan one day. Yeah. And he's got all the videos of him. So we were on this um, big screen in a cinema near Times Square. Oh, wow. And people were actually eating the fish finger sandwich while they were watching. That was the whole kind of connection with the thing. It was amazing. Oh, so, God, they're going to love that story <laughs> over in, in America. They'll adore that. Well, they might well know about the food film fest. And like, people yeah. can buy tickets to actually go and eat the food and watch the film. Oh, wow. You know, I'm guessing it's probably not been on this year. But, you know, like... Yeah. Well, New York, well, York has been hit quite badly, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So. Oh, but, but when it I, comes I, back, that's on my bucket list. Yeah. I'm going to write that down. I want to go there. It was such a surreal experience because they sort of pass the food out in the cinema and everything and then play the film. And obviously Dylan's was only quite a short film. So I was like, oh, you quickly I'm crying. <laughs> and so we got up on stage. And <laughs> did a dance. <laughs> yeah. Shuffled down to Buffalo. <laughs> Oh God! So yeah, that's, I think that's such a really a nice. Oh, we one, must finish there because that's the best story you could possibly tell. And do check out Dylan because he is a delight. He was we no, we're not going to finish there because I've got one more thing to say. Actually, when when I was doing my last photo shoot with you and we were cooking, and he would come in and he would rate my food. <laughs> out of 10 would you give that Dylan oh that's a six <laughs> really he gave a few tens as well how, yeah he did how can we elevate that Dylan oh he's just a star and he was so patient so yeah he's third member of the team I think isn't it <laughs> yeah one day I think yeah. I think he might be thank you for your time that's all thank right. you for your patience Lisa I will send you some Tyrrell's crisps so you can be cooking this one and I I have picked, if it's okay with you guys, yeah. um, I've forgotten which page it was on now, but it was a Dorothy Good. Ah, it's meant to be. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, read it and weep, Lisa, because I'm doing the chocolate cake this time. And it's with a Dorothy Goodbody stout. And Dorothy Goodbody's is made literally four miles from where I live. So that's perfect. So I can pop down there. Fabulous. Thank you for your time. I hope it hasn't been too torturous. (laughs) No, it's been lovely chatting. (laughs) And uh, I look forward to our next photo shoot. Yeah, so do I. (laughs) Hi, so you're in my kitchen now and we're going to make a recipe from Becca and Simon's book, Made in Herefordshire, which is where I live, of course. And we are going to make the luxurious chocolate cake with Dorothy Goodbody's stout in it. So I'm going to take you through all the ingredients first of all, and then we'll crack on and make it. Is it going? Yeah. Here we go with our luxurious chocolate cake. First of all, you need to grease and line a 19 centimetre springform tin. And by springform, which is just the one with the spring on the, on the side, which allows you to get the cake tin out, a cake out of the tin. I'll get my words right in a minute. A lot easier. In this bowl, we've got soft brown sugar, dark soft brown sugar, 275 grams, and we've got 125 grams of softened butter. We will be adding to that. I'll break the two eggs into a bowl, just lightly beat them, and then we'll add those gradually into the butter so it doesn't curdle. We have plain flour, so not self-raising. We've got plain flour, 170 grams. We'll sift that into a bowl in a moment with these two little chaps. We've got one centimetre, one centimetre, one teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda and half a teaspoon of baking powder in there. And that will go in with the flour into the bowl, sifted into the bowl. Then we've got, sorry, it sounds like a lot of ingredients. and It's really not, and it'd be very yummy when it all comes together. We've got um, some nice quality cocoa powder, about 75 grams there, which is three ounces. And to that, we will be mixing 200 mils of our 
wholesome stout. So that's the, the equivalent of the Dorothy Goodbody Stout. That, those are the ingredients for the cake. And then we will be adding a chocolate sauce at the very end, which will need 200 grams of double cream and 150 grams of dark chocolate, good quality dark chocolate. So those are our ingredients. Let's get on and cook. going to do is into our butter mix we're going to alternate we're just going to put a teaspoon of the flour sorry my arms are spilling in front of you and it might be easier to pour this and some of the cocoa mix and you basically carry on doing that you alternate tablespoon of the flour, mix it in and amount of the cocoa mix. Cocoa is back to the sensation.
Well, they say the proof is in the eating. Should we try it? Ooh. Alrighty, it's time to make a really delicious recipe from Fotopia's cookbook. Today, making handmade crispy coated fish finger sammies with tartar sauce. And if you're in the US, that is a fried fish sandwich, but coated in the most amazing tyrrells. Tyrrells? I'm gonna have to double check with you on the pronunciation. But they make the best crisps, or as we call them in the United States, chips. So, first off, we're gonna make a homemade tartar sauce. Do not let the number of ingredients scare you off from making homemade tartar sauce or homemade any kind of sauce. It's really easy. You can lay out everything ahead of time. You know how much I love a mise en place, which basically means getting everything, all your ingredients out so you know that you have them. And it's so easy to put the sauce together. Call in your family, call in your kids, call in your husband. You can all make it together. So the one thing I do like to do is I'm gonna make it in a wide mouthed jar with a lid because that way it's a really nice little container for the homemade tartar sauce. So I highly recommend using this, as well as one of my absolute favorite kitchen gadgets I'm gonna put together, the immersion blender. Love this. So that's how it's gonna be made at the end. But first off, let's get to the ingredients. We are going to have, it's a rapeseed oil, which in the States is really similar to canola oil. So you wanna use a flavorless oil. You don't wanna use olive oil because the olive oil will be too pronounced in the tartar sauce. We have apple cider vinegar, we're gonna use egg yolks, lemon juice, salt and pepper, little mustard powder, there's some capers, some cornichons, which I love these like little, little pickles, they're little tiny pickles, they're so great. A shallot and parsley. And we're gonna add all of this to the jar. Well, actually, first off, we're gonna add the canola oil and the eggs and we're gonna make a mayonnaise base. Homemade mayonnaise is the best. If you've never made homemade mayonnaise, it's so easy, it's literally canola oil and eggs. That's it, and then you can add whatever flavors you want to. You can add lemon, garlic, whatever you want, and obviously in this case we're making tartar sauce. So that's gonna be what we make first. You can make it ahead of time. I actually would suggest you make it ahead of time, unless the flavors give a chance to meld and really develop into an extra beautiful, huge flavor. So that's the first thing. And then over here we have the star. So we've got some fresh cod. You can also use halibut, but I highly recommend cod. But this would be really delicious. We've got the Terrell's, oh, so good, chips. We've got some paprika, lemon, we're gonna do another egg, flour, and then brioche buns. You can use Hawaiian buns. I love kind of like the softer buns for this. You can toast them up with some butter. So good. And we're just basically doing a really traditional breading. So we're gonna crunch up the crisps, the potato chips, um, we're gonna have a separate bowl with the flour and the paprika and a separate bowl, oh, and, and the lemon. We're gonna just use the lemon zest and then a separate bowl for the egg. So really traditional, really super easy breading for the fish. That's it, so let's get started. So good. Mmm. Oh, Jane. So good. The char sauce is tangy. It's got that herby flavor from the parsley. You got the fresh fish, a little bit of lemon. So good. So, recipe, link below. So what did you think of that? 
was really wonderful. You know, as someone that is constantly working on my own food photography, mm. I learned so much, especially about the shadows and how to create better food photographs, what it takes, what it goes into. I think people think, yes. oh, you just make a dish and take a photo and do some edits and there you go. But there's so much more that goes into food photography. I thought it was fascinating. Oh, they're lovely. And they're just lovely people to work with. You can see they're very gentle souls that, you know, kindred spirits, I would say. And you can tell that they know what they're doing. I mean, the quality of the video. I was so surprised when I got there because I didn't know that I had that cookery book on my shelf and I did not know that they had produced it. I mean, what a coincidence, my, my laptop's sitting on it at the moment, so I can't show you. <laughs> but it was so strange because I got home and the two recipes that they'd recommended, I think I've told you that because it spooked me a bit, but when I got home and looked at the recipes that they'd recommended, my book, I'm, I'm going to slow down, build the drama, my book, the two pages that had corners turned down with those two recipes. I could just cut chills. It's mm -hmm. weird. <laughs> Even I got chills. <laughs> this is strange. Not only did I not know that it was their cookery book, but the two recipes they wanted us to cook were the two that I turned down the corners. Chills. Weird. That was fabulous. Spooky. <laughs> So, so, episode, so hopefully everyone enjoyed watching the chocolate cake, by the way. Yes. It's amazing. Which is delicious. Oh my gosh. Highly so recommended. Cool. We've got um, a still, we can put it in uh, as well that you've got all the ingredients so you don't have to rush around trying to find the book, which is great. Links and you will below. be. Yep. Links are all below. The fish sandwich, highly recommend that homemade tartar sauce. Or as you say, is it, do you say tartar? Tartar, yeah, I say tartar. I don't like tartar sauce, I'll be honest. But I'd, I'd have the ketchup out. Ooh. That's me. You could I do that. Like a really good tartar sauce. I like a good homemade tartar sauce. And making the homemade aioli, the make homemade mayonnaise. Mm. So, yeah. so, so good. So I definitely- I'm Convincing on that one. <laughs> okay. Okay. You don't like mayonnaise. You don't like mayonnaise, so it's not- I don't. I yeah. don't, and I like everything that goes into it. I just don't like that combination of flavors. And I mean, I'm so easily pleased, but it's just something about my taste buds that just screams no. no. Mm -mm. Well, the sandwich I think would be easily delicious with the tartar or just with a really delicious aioli and then okay. with the ketchup. Yeah, and we'll do, we'll donate, uh, not donate, we'll, what's the word when you, um, oh, we can tell it's evening here, can't you? And I've eaten. Um, we'll, we'll offer up the okay. video to their son, Dylan, who is just an absolute delight. Oh, he sounds precious. He, he's gorgeous. Well, you all know the drill. If you like this episode, like and subscribe. We would love free to like and subscribe. And that way, you know, when new episodes hit, which are every Friday, as we like to call Foodie Fridays. And we have, Fridays. we have really fun upcoming episodes. We have mm -hmm. themed episodes coming up. We have tea episodes and picnic episodes. And we have some really fun episodes coming up that you're not going to want to miss. So yeah, like and subscribe. All the links that we talk about in the video are below. Links for the recipe and Follow Photopia on their Instagram and social media for tips. Yes, we'll put the links for them below as well, because uh, you, you'll catch up with all sorts of hints and tips if you watch them. They're lovely. Exactly. All righty. Well, Thank you for joining me, Lisa. Thank you for joining me, Jane. This is lovely. Cheers to you. Thanks for everyone for watching. Cheers, everybody. Here's Enjoy. Bye. Bye.